today we are talking about the most controversial opinions you guys have about Smite. I asked in my community tab about your most controversial opinion and I got a lot of replies. I got a ton of replies. I had to pick some out, so obviously I didn't go with mostly the highest upvoted ones because if opinions are very, very upvoted, it's very likely they're not actually that controversial because a lot of people agree with them. So we're gonna start off with some lighter ones that were still a little bit more popular and then go into the abyss of really controversial ones. The first one is Ryan Boone, there should be a physical protection version of Pestilence. That, for example, I think is hardly controversial. That would be a very good idea and I don't think many people are opposed to it. But then we have the Blitzing Wolf. Smite needs to completely stop a new content besides skins probably for a while and just focus on fixing what exists. And then he goes over all the examples and says that Hyrus should take half a year to do that. And I do not believe that that is going to work. Yes, I think Hyrus should invest more resources into fixing things. And I've recently talked about this. They are already shifting resources in that direction. But stopping content for the most part for half a year is horrible for a game like Smite that needs to constantly refresh itself to some degree. And in fact, you can see that with many current games. Look at, for example, Fortnite versus Apex Legends. Apex Legends briefly overtook Fortnite and then basically almost collapsed in player base due to not having updates quickly enough. Smite is later in its cycle, so it can take things a little bit slower, but stopping content for half a year would be devastating for the player base because players want changes, they want fresh things from time to time, otherwise the game will get too stale. And you can still get fixes anyways. Patrick Matinier says, The game is actually decently balanced for the most part, with a few exceptions, but players complain rather than to learn to play against it. I think this is true to some degree. I think players complain too much about how balanced the game is at any point in time and say there's this broken thing and that broken thing without looking at all the other aspects that are balanced. At the moment we're seeing a lot of different guards played, even on the competitive level, so really the game can't be that broken, even though a lot of players will always have this feeling. That said, complaining about the most obvious issues is not a bad idea anyways, just so that Hyrus is aware of what the community wants. D-Train says, supports die too easily. I watched heaps of SPL games and tanks are just getting deleted as if protections meant nothing. Now I think that protection reduction is currently too strong, there are too many tools to get that too easily and that's partially coming from tanks ironically, but I think there's another big point here. And there were other comments about something similar saying that guardians have too much damage. I think Hyrus has to see what the path for supports is in the future, because as of now supports aren't as tanky as they could be, but they also don't deal little damage. Many supports can still deal a decent amount of damage, the newest example here would be Horus. So if we make supports tankier, we have to give them a downside of taking away some of their damage. If that's something that will happen in the future, is something that we'll have to see. Sonic the Hedgehog came down and took a break from his wonderful new movie in order to tell us this. Red Tusker and Nox reworks were a lazy fix because of Hyrus inability and lack of patience to balance them. Both gods are not half as creative or fun as they were. Red Tosca feels like Thor 2.0 and Nox just annoying to play against. Now I agree that Nox's old kit was a bit more creative and she feels a bit annoying to play against. But in Red Tosca's case, I gotta say, as much as the kit was maybe a little bit more unique, I can see why Hyrus didn't want to stick to that kit. It was not hard to balance, it was impossible to balance. Balancing out these four A currents against each other in a way that is even remotely close to reasonable is just something that would take way too much work for a character that has a lot of perks outside of that as well. I think new Red Tusker is a little bit boring in comparison maybe, but I also don't think he's Thor 2.0. I think this comparison just comes way too much from the old and not looking at the kit as a whole. They still have significant differences in how they are played. Magnets and Miracles Gaming says Hyrus should stop spamming new gods. Most of them are lame and uninspired. Developing new gods needs more time. And I gotta wonder, have you been around for the recent releases? Because I don't see this. I don't see that Yomer Gunder was lame or uninspired. I don't see that Set was lame or uninspired. I don't see that Horus was lame or uninspired. They all have unique features. Okay, maybe Arthur and Merlin were not quite as creative, but still creative enough in my opinion. So I'm really not sure where this is coming from. The Ethereum Pantheon on the other hand was a weird thing. I don't know why they did that. The Ginger Panda says, Conquest isn't the most competitive game mode. 
probably somewhere around 1 in 10 games is legitimately competitive for most. All the game and the rest are ruined early by one trick players, troll picks because they saw someone do it or players who stop trying if they die and or get mad if given advice to play passive or go a certain item. Then trap others in the game by not surrendering. Meanwhile in Arena Assault and Clash most games are close or back and forth. Granted Arena games are because of the ticket system is a broken system and more times than not randoms still try to fill out a traditional team. Now honestly this sounds like your Conquest ELO is just very different from your ELO in other game modes. The experiences that are described here of course happen and that's just down to bad players but that can happen in any game mode. I think if you would commit more towards Conquest and grind up in MMR you would have less of the experience that you're having. I do believe that a troll in Conquest is a lot more impactful than in other modes unfortunately but I don't think that other modes are nearly as competitive most of the time. And it's relatively easy to prove that by getting a team of coordinated players go in any of those modes together. Because at that point you will see that in Conquest you can still face a challenge. But if you have a coordinated team in Arena, game's over. You cannot lose unless you are just actively trying to go for a meme strat or troll strat, which is actually what most full pre-mates end up doing anyways in those game modes because otherwise they would just be too boring for them. So I can't really agree with this. I'm not loved says, Gem of Isolation is way too strong of an item in conjunction with most mages and needs a hard nerf. I do think that Gem of Isolation is too strong on some mages. I think that the passive is very long with the slow, that could be looked at and it's very easy to apply, but I think it's more that Merlin is a problem with this item than that mages overall are too strong with it. There's only a select few mages that really frequently build it and most of them are not OP because of the item immediately, whereas Merlin kinda is. Cory Bernieri has a lot to say about the current god design, I'm just gonna skip to the end here. As Amas said in his video, god releases lack identity. They don't have any specific thing they do better or differently. Now I am not sure when Mars said this, but if he said it after Set and Horus were released, I have to hard disagree. Both of these gods have identity, that's for sure. They have unique abilities and they have a unique role to fill in the game in how they play. There are other characters that can in some regards be similar to Set maybe, but not the same. And there are really no characters that function the same way that Horus does. Maybe Janus to some degree, but it's still a vastly different character in a different class with different items, different role overall, so I can't agree with this. Electro Gypsy thinks that Odin needs a massive rework and the main reason is when you need to add an active specifically to counter one character's ult, Phantom in this case, you know something is wrong. I mean, Poseidon, Aegis? Um, many gods ultimates beats? I, I don't know. I, I can see that Phantom is more effective against Odin than against other gods, but saying that something is wrong if you need a specific relic, I, I don't know where that's coming from, really. Like on a, on a jungler I would build blink and beats in most situations, but then if I see a Poseidon I'm way more likely to go into Aegis just because of that. So yeah, and you can still use Phantom in other situations as well. It still has other perks when upgraded. So yeah, I don't really see this one either. Draken T says, Freya is still broken. Right, so she would be overperforming on all levels. And let's just see how she's overall performing on all levels and sought by win rate in Conquest.
No, oh, there she is. Almost missed her. Yeah, no. Clearly, most broken guy in the game right now. I absolutely agree. Nerf Freya. Because there's no other problematic gods that we need to nerf first. No, seriously. I'm not a fan of Freya Matos myself, and I am okay with her being nerfed to a point where she's not overly performing compared to other gods and is only good in the hands of people that play really well. But right now, Freya really isn't overperforming that much anymore, so I don't think that she would need to be nerfed into the ground. Six to Street says, different from many others in the comments, by the way, Nike's kit is fine and does not need a rework. It's fine to have simple gods to appeal to those who enjoy a laid-back tanky playstyle. Not every god has to appeal to everyone. I actually agree with that. I don't think Nike needs a rework either. I think she could have some adjustments, some tweaks here and there, some buffs maybe. And maybe also some nerfs in return so that her win rate doesn't get too high. But I don't think she needs an entire rework and I think in itself the character is just okay as a more passive character. According to Killer of Fun, the skin argument is dumb. Neath has 3,828,582 skins because people buy them. If you actually care for Earl Lange Hunbats, play the god and get ready to pry open your wallet. I agree, if a less popular god gets a skin, you should buy it. But also, I think that Hyrus so far has gone a lot by which god is popular in general, and then obviously based on that they will also get a lot of skin sales. But if you look at the stats individually for which god hasn't gotten a skin in a long time, you can also get very good sales that way, because people are waiting for that skin more than they are waiting for a Neath skin. So I'm kind of okay with both takes here. I do get that people get annoyed with the amount of Neath skins though, because it's just a running gag at this point. And it is frustrating to see if you're playing a god a lot and they never get a skin, but Neath gets yet another one. Dovakin Brown says, Hyrus needs to come to Sony with an ultimatum. Either create a crossplay or remove Smite from PS4. I can tell you that that is not going to happen. I, I think Hyrus would like to flex on Sony if they could, but I don't think they're in the position to do that. I think financially they cannot afford to do that and they would piss off a lot of their own player base. Sculping Snake. I'm glad I can say this because I'm interested in your opinion, with you mainly playing jungle. Haste and Katana is just bad. Not in the sense that you shouldn't build it, but in the sense that it's extremely unfun to play against. Usually it goes, enemy jungle blinks on you, use it ability to deal damage, you use your movement ability to get away, hopefully you have one, and then the enemy jungler uses their movement ability to catch up to you, and then Haste and Katana does the rest. Based on the description of this fighting scenario here, I can tell that this is not about a solo laner and this is not about a support. This must either be about mid laners, or mages rather, or about hunters. Doesn't really matter, same outcome. Assassins are specifically designed to kill these gods, these squishies. Everything in their kit screams attack the squishies. Do not go for the tanks, you're going to be weak against them. So if you're looking at rock, paper, scissors, you would be the paper and the assassin would be the scissor. That's one thing to keep in mind. You're supposed to lose this matchup in most situations unless you play it very well. Now, if the assassin can blink on you, that means you already have a lack of vision somewhere, you maybe have a lack of uh, rotation on yours and that would punish the blink immediately. Something is going on there. Or you're just too far pushed up onto the enemy. This is something that can't always be avoided. But then, furthermore, you're also saying that with your own escape, you're not able to get close enough to the tower to survive that way, because the assassin would get punished the moment they get under tower, unless we're not talking conquest here. Based on that, you are very far out of your own safety zone as a squishy, which means that's exactly when an assassin will go for you. And then, we also now know that in this case, the assassin has to use their blink, plus their own escape to even aggress onto you. If the assassin was not able to decently kill you at this point, haste and katana or not, a burst assassin would be no different, then the assassin would not be able to do their own job, because their own job is to burst you down and chase you down. What you need at that moment is a punishment from your teammates, or you shouldn't be that far pushed up, because if you're that far pushed up without any teammates around you, then you can expect to get ganked. And haste and katana is not the major factor here. 
technically speaking, if the enemy hunter blinked in on you, they could do the exact same thing and they don't even need to be in melee range for it. At that point, it is your job as whichever character you are playing as to utilize the tools that you have. Use your hard CC if you have any, use your cripples, especially if you're Poseidon and they can't even chase you down. Use your damage to punish them before you can get in a situation where you're in trouble. Just, just make it so that they back off and don't feel like chasing. Use your own relics and try to survive. Or play your escape safer than the assassin is. Depending on which assassin that is in particular, it can work in your favor. For example, if you go over a wall and they just have a dash. But at the end of the day, you have to be aware of where enemies are and you have to watch your positioning and you have to be aware of your own jungler before you can kind of talk about an item being the issue. Ice and Katana can of course be frustrating to play against at times, but so can Frostbound Hammer, so can Gem of Isolation, and so can be many other items. For example, for many assassins it can be extremely frustrating to play against Magi's Cloak or Metal of Discord. Masio says, having the top damage is no bragging right in most situations. And while I know that a lot of people don't agree with that, I absolutely agree. Especially when you're a solo laner, you have so much slab damage that doesn't really have any value, and it's not worth bragging about. And in many situations, you also have people bragging about the top damage while they keep dying and diving in and just dealing damage while they're dying. So it's not necessarily a measurement for success or skill. Jan Solo says, Aris passive should provide 20 magical and 10 physical power to nearby allies per aura item as well. So he says that if you have Sovereignty, Void Shield, Thebes and Hardwood on Ares, then you should give your allies 80 magical power and 40 physical power. Oh, and Clash is the best and more people should play it. Joust is boring, to be honest. Well, I was wondering what kind of person would make a claim like that after the first part, but now that I know it's a Clash main, nothing surprises me anymore. Smoking Pineapple says, the home menu hub is fine and people blew it out of proportion when they changed it. I don't know what platform you're on. If you're on console, I can see where you're coming from. If you're on PC, I'd be very surprised. We still have a massive amount of issues on PC when it comes to inviting, getting into games, chats not working, all that kind of stuff. And the usability is still very low because Hyrule now prioritizes is fixing over adding features. So... I can't really say that the result is good and for me personally this still feels way worse than the old UI with a friendless at the side because it was way more intuitive and usable on a PC. Richard thinks that crit should be removed from the game. Now this debate is as old as time so I make it simple here. I think a crit mechanic that is stacking crits basically so that you're guaranteed a crit after every third shot instead of having an RNG effect would be better for the game because it would be less of a gamble but I don't think it should be entirely removed because it's still an interesting mechanic for hunters overall. Critical thinking has a very critical thought. Smite needs fewer guards, not more. Hyus should begin removing characters. This is the only way, in my opinion, a game as complex as Smite can achieve any semblance of balance. What is the point in having so many inferior characters in the game? Learn from the mistakes that were made and ensure that each character is unique and relevant. After all is said and done, begin re-adding the irrelevant characters with new kits. There should never be a rush to create new flashy models when core gameplay mechanics are suffering. This is my controversial opinion that most probably won't agree with. I do agree that this one is very controversial. We looked at the win rates of the gods beforehand when we were talking about Freya, and did it really look like the win disparity between these gods was so massive? I don't think that many gods are absolutely horrid and need complete reworks in order to function properly. I don't think Smite is nearly in a state imbalanced enough for that to be warranted. And I also think a lot of people would quit outright if you take away the god that they are playing the most, even if they're not that meta. Reworks can be done without taking the character away first, and even those should be done with caution. Matthew Tyndall says Smite has a problem with representation in its god design. He also does not think that Hyrus are secretly racist and it's just happening without realizing it. Now, I'm sure this opinion is controversial for many from the start, but I do agree. I don't necessarily agree with the examples that are brought up here. I think Pele and Awilish aren't shown as white. They are shown as slightly tan, but there are a lot of examples of gods that are weirdly white, like the goddess of demonization, where you just gotta wonder, why is that? 
And then you look at the new Smite Mobile game and you realize that even more gods are extremely whitewashed there. But that's because it's from a Chinese company as far as I know. I actually think that the female representation at Smite is still relatively boring. There's still a lot of gods that kind of use the same base model over and over when it comes to the female side, while there's a lot more variety on the male side. But in this case, we'll just have to see what the future brings and if Hyrus pays attention to this. Roy says, Aegis Amulet is the most broken relic in the game and should be removed entirely. It's not fair how you can outplay someone just by being immune to their damage. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I think certain gods would just completely blow up if that was the case. Think for example Zeus and Poseidon that just don't really have a strong counter to their heavy burst anymore and I don't think that would be good for the game. Dion Jones says, I don't like that the game isn't region locked or locked behind language. And this is due to having Spanish people on the NA servers. You haven't seen anything. You have never had to play on EU where you have five different languages clashing and half the people not speaking English at any point. Compared to that, having a few Spanish players in your team sometimes is nothing. But outside of that, I don't think that this is something that will happen in the long run. A, certain regions don't necessarily should be locked out of playing in other regions, like for example Australia. You just have certain times of the day where you don't get a queue. They still speak English, doesn't matter that much, you won't notice, but they will just have to play on an A at other times. And B, you can't make a language barrier in a game for anything really, it's not happening. You could have language based servers, but that would completely overhaul the structure and then make things complex again because matchmaking would be much harder for each individual region, so don't think that's gonna happen either. Juan Pablo says, Smite has the most toxic player base I've ever encountered. Not even joking, worst community in gaming. Now I wonder how many communities you've been in, but I can assure you that this is not the worst community in gaming. Smite is competitive and it is complex and that leads to a lot of toxicity, that is for sure. But I can promise you that at least in the early days before all the rules were brought in, League of Legends community was way more toxic. People were better on average, but they would let you know at every occasion they could and they would be so toxic about it. If you just built one item differently from what they would do, it was absolutely horrible and it's by far not the only game with that kind of community looking over at the shooter side of things as well. Smite is not perfect in that regard, but it's definitely not the worst. 3 Starmat says, Archon Thanatos is overrated and probably the worst tier 5 skill. I am surprised. I think that it's a little bit outdated and I think that Thanatos has a few good new skins and some of the other tier 5 skins have gotten better, but... The worst? I mean, have you seen the Thor one? Michael Vanji has a set of interesting controversial opinions. First, you can come back and win any game as long as it's at least 3v5. I don't think you can win any 3v5. I think with current matchmaking you can be lucky to sometimes possibly have a shot to win a 3v5, but any 3v5, I don't think so. Second, Towers, Phoenixes and Titans should do more damage. I don't think that's super controversial, that's like up to you, depending on how you like the game to be. I don't really mind. Third, jungles should help losing lanes instead of ignoring them. This gives me the impression that you haven't played all too much jungle. The issue when helping a losing lane much is that you will possibly put yourself behind as well in the attempt to help them, instead of getting other lanes more ahead and getting yourself ahead that way through kills as well. There are situations where helping a losing lane can be useful. It can kind of bring the lane back if you have a good gank on that lane or you can get them a good objective, a good buff or something. But generally speaking, the focus should not be on helping losing lanes, but rather trying to get the other lane stable so that the losing lane can be offset for later in the game. Gatnoa thinks that Chuck is really good and his ultimate is scary. I think Chuck is fine. Chuck is fun, Chuck is a nice solo laner, and especially for beginners, he's a great god to learn on. Looking at his performance in the competitive scene, or rather his lack of presence, I would say that claiming he's really good, 
is maybe a bit over the top. His ultimate being scary is personal preference. I usually don't get scared by abilities in Smite because it's not a horror game. Rai Azul says, Junglers should have a standard amount of times they should appear in a lane to gank before going back. That sounds like you my man are pushing up in the lane way too much so the jungler is not going to gank you because you will not get them any kills because you're putting too much pressure on the enemy and you can't bait them that way. Play more passive and let the enemy push towards your tower a little bit more and there's a much higher chance that the jungler will end up ganking your lane because he will see the opportunity for himself as well. SG Counter says, there needs to be a system where masters or grandmasters player reports should go straight to high-res so they can look over it manually and if the per one person starts to abuse the system, they are removed off the list. Grandmasters and masters player reports should be taken more seriously because they care more clearly about the game and who is trolling. That is an extremely strange take and I don't know where it's coming from. Why would someone inherently care more about the game because they're in a high division. Do casual players that play the game a lot not care about the game? Do bad players that play the game a lot not care about the game? Do people that are good at the game but don't play a lot and end up in Masters automatically have some sort of badge that says I am passionate about the game now rather than just knowing that they're good at the game? I'm not opposed to some sort of smite police kind of system voluntarily where people have more weight on their reports but their reports also have to be very highly cleared and if they do one wrong report they get in more trouble for it. But basing that on the division is very 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 strange. Tenagon. Will this default voice irritates me more than any other annoying skin voice pack? If I see one and she has the voice pack. I immediately mute her. No exceptions. Reading this post made me want to mute you. But because I asked for controversial opinions, I can't do that. So, fair game. Sethor. Season 4 Conquest was when Smite was at its best. I, I, I mean, I guess maybe if you weren't a jungler and you loved sharing camps with two other people, then, then maybe that's the case. I don't know, I don't think that was the case for most people, but if you have a weird fetish for that, I can't judge. Volume. The fact that you can build your way to victory and not have skill. Obviously people have both, but I see bots with perfect builds still winning. Good. I also see good players with bot builds still winning, so I guess it goes both ways. I think that's perfectly fine and everyone can use their own advantage in the game in whichever way they want to and in whatever they want to focus on. Nico Z. I'll say it since no one else will. There's too many goddamn mages in the game. I agree. I also understand why though. A lot of mages aren't inherently mages, they are technically more hunters or assassins. And also, because we're talking about mythology, it's always easiest to put a god into the mage section. In one way or another, they're all magical, they all have some psychic power or something. And for certain gods, it's much harder to fit them into specific subcategories because it just doesn't match with what they do lore-wise than just putting them as a mage. Think for example Loki. All things considered, he is a very good fit for an assassin. But if Loki was a mage, it would still kind of match his lore in many many ways. Other roles? A warrior? I guess maybe somehow, but a hunter for example? That would be kind of hard in comparison to fit him there. Mages just seem to be the most universal in that regard and that kind of helps them having so many. And that is it for the most controversial opinions. There were a lot more, I'm sorry I couldn't cover all of them, but as you can tell the video is getting very long already. Thank you for submitting your opinions and if you're new to the channel, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell, it re-ups me out. Other than that, see you for the next one tomorrow. Dukesloth, out.